Hey guys, welcome to Friday's live stream. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. It's February 3rd, 2023, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. We are working on Socialites, which is our free sew along, and we are on block 14. I'm gonna show it to you right here. It's actually the easiest block of the entire series. And this series comes in a free three inch, six inch, and nine inch pattern and on this one it's super easy because all you have is four half square triangles two two patches and you have a center center square and um denise do you think i can have fabrics a and d um i'm gonna show a little trick on that like a strip of it and um let's see so this is Dwell, this is Cinnamon and Cream, and this one is Nutmeg. And so um, really, you could do what, you could actually put background here if you wanted to, just to have more white, and just very easy. Now the designer of this block is April Rosenthal. She is a Moda Fabric designer and designer behind Prairie Grass Patterns. I'm gonna show you some other blocks just so that you can look at all the different collections and decide which one you like. This one is stateside. This one's really cute because uh, this one, she fussy cut a uh, chicken. It says chicken on it, super cute. We've got Christopher Thompson's fabric, the Emma collection by Sherry and Chelsea, Isabella by Minnick and Simpson, and then the Flower Farm by Bunny Hill Designs. So I kind of wanted to point out a couple of things. This one, all the stripes kind of um, go towards the center. You could do the stripes where they're all up and down or all sideways. And then these two are all kind of making a flash into the center. And that's what I meant about you could also use a background in the center if you wanted to, like a lighter color. And then I think all of these are fussy cut right here so these for sure well not that one but this one you can see that she fussy cut the flag and by different fabric placement you can see the impact this one obviously is the most powerful because your eye goes right to it um i was going to talk a little bit about the block designer and show her block real quick so her block um is a nine inch version and she sewed it with different collections from her stash. She used some art gallery fabrics, some Robert Kaufman, Carolyn Friedlander fabrics, and then two prints from her Love Lily and Midnight Magic collections from Moda. So if you look at that, that's got art gallery, Robert Kaufman, and two different Moda collections. And she wanted to do her block in orange because that is her favorite colorway. And she says it's about time she made a quilt for herself. And she loves this block because it's simple and striking. And I'm gonna show you four pop-ups of her patterns. This is um, her pattern company. This is Criss Cross, Cloud Break, and Grammy Scrap Basket. I did wanna mention those last two were made in Twinkle, which is a basic for Moda. And then Flirty, and then that uses the Zinnia collection and the backgrounds from Zinnia. And um, there isn't a video yet to show you how to color a quilt, but we're working on that, Brenda. So I'm gonna kinda of jump right into the block. Now, today the size I'm making is six inch, and so I'm gonna replicate this block. So let's first talk about the pattern. So I cover up the size I'm not doing just so I don't make a mistake. So this first step is to make half square triangles. If you're making the three inch size, you would use H100. If you're using the nine inch, you would use H300. And if you're making the size I'm using, you're gonna use H200. So I'm going to show you, I basically just cut this one's a prototype, so that's why the sticker's not coming off correctly. Um, I'm just going to cut right on that line. 
Now the more accurate you cut on that line, the better result you're gonna get. And since this one I can't really use because the paper is sticking, I'm just gonna cut right here so I don't have to worry about that. So basically with half square triangle paper, you're gonna stitch on the dotted line. So that is fabric C and B. And if I look at C and B, I need two squares. So these are my two fabrics, B and C. I'm gonna put them right sides together. And whenever you're doing this, especially if you're using scraps, whatever is the smallest piece you wanna put on top so you don't accidentally sew. And I'm gonna actually show you later an example of where I accidentally didn't get all the way on the paper when I show you um, our triangles on a row sew along that we're gonna start. So I'm just gonna get this nice and flat and pin. Now when you go to this, this is a two patch. I'm gonna show you two different ways you can make it. So you can take fabric A and fabric D squares, put them right sides together, stitch a quarter inch across, and this will be your unit. That's easy. But I'm gonna show you today a way to cheat and make this faster than doing four separate seams. So what I'm gonna do is just take a piece of my white, and a piece of my red, and I'm gonna put these right sides together, and I'm gonna show you how to calculate what to cut. So when you look, I'm only gonna look at my six inch size. I'm gonna need two and a half inches times four. That's 10 inches. Now, so I need at least 10 inches across, but I'm always gonna do a little bit more. So I'm gonna do 10 and a half or 11. Now for A and D, it's one and a half, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do a little bit bigger and show you later how, why. So I'm gonna press this real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna just put my ruler where it's about 11 inches, so about right here. And I need one and a half, but I'm not even gonna measure that. I'm just gonna cut. And I'm actually gonna try to cut where the stripe is straight and it looks like it is. And then what I'm gonna do is put pins right here and I'm gonna sew on this side because that's my straight edge. And I've already got right sides together. So I've already got that and I'm gonna sew down here. So I've got all of that cut. The only thing left to cut is the center square, which is E. Now, here is E fussy cut. And that just means I cut around so that this little motif would show. So I think that I cut one of these places. So we did that on a previous one. And you know, you could do this, but it would kind of get lost. If you did this, it would totally get lost. So really um, just play with whatever ruler you have. And if you're not sure if it's gonna look good, so for example, if you, you wanted to just see what this looks like, you could take a friction pin, mark around it, and then put your finger a quarter inch in and you will see exactly what it's gonna look like. And to me, that's too busy. But that's one way you can check before you cut is to use a friction pin. But I've already fussy cut, so we've got that cut and that is going to be my fabric E. So I'll put this here and this here. Now, I'm gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam and the reason I pinned it was just so I sewed the right side. I don't wanna sew on the wrong side that's not straight. 
And then this, I'm gonna stitch with a shorter stitch length so the paper comes off easily. So let's go sew. And actually, I have the wrong side together. So I've gotta flip the white. So, right sides together. And I sewed really fast and it didn't have to be accurate because I'll show you why in a second. So lower your stitch length, stitch on the dotted lines. And before I stitch, stitch on this side, I'm gonna flatten the paper. Before I go press, I am going to cut this on the solid lines as accurately as you can. And I have a little person in here that's going to come and pull the paper for me. Are you going to come pull the paper? No. No? Okay. I have a son in here. He doesn't want to be on camera, I guess. Come on, Christopher. No. Okay, he's not going to pull the paper, so I'll pull the paper. And if you're pulling and the paper's not coming off, your stitch length is too big or your needle is too dull. As I say that, when that paper doesn't come off. And then I'm going to go iron. and I'm gonna press to one side first. I do use my knee lift, Linda, and my machine that I'm using does only use a straight stitch. Um, let's see, I love triangles on a roll, but the last time I used it, I sewed the direction arrows, not on the sew line. Oops, it was easy to fix. So from here, I'm gonna cut off the dog ears then I'm gonna press open piggy's great I'll show you a picture if you want Jordan can you pop up that picture I'll show a picture of him yesterday So that is Christopher and the dog Piggy. So yesterday it was really, really cold and we tried to go under those trees and didn't realize it was frozen and we couldn't get through. So we had to come out of the, we had to come out of that. Okay, so these I'm gonna put here. Now this one, this is called a strip set. I'm gonna press to one side. Good morning, Christopher Thompson. And then I'm gonna press open. It's pretty hot. And uh, Brian asks the question about best press. So you guys in the chat can definitely answer him. He wants to know, do you mix it with water or straight from the bottle? Um, I don't use breast press, so I'm gonna let you guys answer. Okay, so now let's talk about this and how to make it, how to cut down both across the length and the width or vice versa. So. Like I said, we could have sewed four different units. I'm just going to show you. You know, you could have done it four times. But that would have been 
start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. So I always do it this way. So I just make it a little bit bigger, like maybe a quarter inch bigger. So I'm going to look again at my measurements of A, and that says one and a half. So I'm gonna take one and a half minus a quarter inch, and that's one and a quarter. And I'm gonna put the one and a quarter line on my ruler with the seam. Do the same thing on the other side. Put that one and a quarter there. Now that means that's two and a half. That matches perfectly to two and a half right here. Now, sometimes I make mistakes when I do this, I will admit. So from here, I'm gonna get a clean edge now. I'm gonna start on this end. And you're gonna subcut these into two and a half inch sections. So to do that, I'm just, you can either use your two and a half inch square ruler, which I just had. So you can either just, you can do it easy and just chop, 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 chop. Or I usually do it this way where I'm gonna cut at the five inch first, go back to two and a half, and that gives me two units. And one day we should probably have like a nine patch off or something where I like one person sews the regular way and one person sews the fast way and see which one is faster because I know this is going to be faster. So this block is just as easy as that. I mean, now all we have to do is lay our pieces out. So I just have to find that center square. Let's see. And then I'm gonna put my dark blues in the center. And then we'll talk about color placement here. So I could change it up. If you wanted this to be like a stronger, bolder block, you could cut one of these blue fabrics and put it in here and then it'd be really strong. You could rotate your whites to touch the center. And then you would kind of have a ring in the center of white. That looks really nice. You could have it that way. You could also do this. That's kind of messy. And you could also, let's see. You could also do this. So there's like six or seven options you can do with this. But let me go back to the original. And the original has the blue this way. So I think I have it back to the normal way. But always have fun, like when you're doing these blocks, do, um, have fun, do whatever you want. You could even put a four patch here, nine patch here. You could do, you could change up the block to make it um, harder if you wanted to. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about chain piecing. I'm gonna put these right sides together and pin all the way down. We're gonna chain piece and I'm just gonna kind of talk about chain piecing since I haven't talked about it in a while. Thank you, Gloria. She says fat quarter bundle is my all-time favorite. Oh, favorite pre-cut. Terial Magic, that is a product that bag users make and it gives your fabric like a crinkly look. What is my most popular and least popular pre-cut? What is Kimberly's? Mine is the layer cake followed by Fat quarter bundle. My least favorite is jelly roll because it makes a mess. So I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna stitch down here. Change to a quarter inch foot. Make my stitch length wider. And then just chain a couple of stitches in between, don't cut. From here, 
press to one side and then press open. I do use steam. I starch and once I starch, my fabric has shrunk. Once it has shrunk, if you use steam, it's not going to shrink any further. I've always used steam. Hi from below zero Minnesota. Kimberly, do I ever use a wool pressing mat? I don't because the smell bothers me. So the wool comes from animals and that smell just really bothers me. Um, Kevin always says I can smell anything a mile away and I can. Now from here, you can either add this, but I'm gonna cut this because if you don't cut this, it's gonna kind of drag on your machine. Kath asks, ask Kimberly how I stay motivated to sew. I'm hitting a drag time. Well, I have those times too, but since it's my job, I kind of have to. Maybe starting, you know, just do a little bit, five minutes, 10 minutes, and it might get you back into it. And also another thing is like change your project. Just change whatever you're working on. Maybe you're tired of working on it. Use a stick roller brush on jelly rolls to remove fuzz. Yeah, that's a good idea. So from here, leaving everything chained together, press to one side. Press open. Um, you guys, you know, let's do a poll and see what size you're, ma you're making. Are you making three inch, six inch, or 12 inch? Soon we'll be moving on to nine inch for all of you doing the nine inch. So from here, I'm going to put these right sides together and pin. Thank you for the super chat, Gloria Smith. She says, thank you for all you do and your, I can't read it. Oh, and your team that does for us. Thank you so much. So appreciate your tips and tricks. Thank you. You said when chain piecing, use a wider stitch. Okay. So I use, when I'm normally stitching, I use a 1.5 and that's super tiny. Most people would use a 2.0. I get motivated by cleaning and organizing my studio. Oh my gosh, that's a great tip. So from here, I'm gonna stitch. Now I have this chain together still. And then after I stitch this, I will stop at my sewing machine and pin this and add this. And by keeping it chained together, it's gonna prevent me from accidentally sewing the wrong side and flipping it. and then just do that same thing. Now from here, if you try to press out, I would just press, finger press, and then press so you don't get wrinkles. But I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna press one side toward the center, one side toward the center. And that way I don't get a bulk. Now, okay, right here, that little seam needs to be unpicked 
and I'll usually just pull the stitches. Now I'm going to go back over that real quick. And there is another one up here. Press open. My iron is saying, wake up, wake up. Now, then I'm gonna press from the front. I'm gonna trim the sides, and since this is a super beginner block, very little should come off. And then I'm gonna talk about using the clappers. If y'all have any questions, pop them in now, because I'm gonna answer any questions about the block before I move on to other things. So what I do here is press the back one more time, press the front. I'm gonna make sure this wood is, all, this is why I would like a six inch one. I'm gonna let that sit. And when I come back, it'll be completely flat. So I'll probably leave that about 20 minutes. Sorry, there was a question on the presser foot. So this foot, I call it an open toe foot. It's not an open toe foot. I don't know exactly what you call it, but that's what Kimberly calls it. This came with my Juki. I use a Juki TL2010Q. I'm not sponsored by Juki in any way. I just happen to love the machine. I wish I was sponsored by them, but I'm not. So, but I do love their machine. So this is came with the machine. Now, the quarter inch foot that comes with the Juki is not 100% accurate because it is actually built in centimeters. Ask me how I know, it took me a couple years to figure that out. So, this foot is accurate. It's very inexpensive, and I got it from Lisa Bonjean at Primitive Gatherings. I think her website is primitivegatherings.co or .us, um, but anyway, the one that she sells is the one that works. Okay, so Deborah asks, is Kimberly going to do a tutorial on color theory? I thought I heard her mention it a while back. So we have a video coming up, and I'm gonna scroll down to the date to see what day it is, but um, I could actually go over it now if you wanted to go back up past it. Right there. Okay, so I'll show the blocks right now just to show you. Um, let's see, that is coming out Tuesday, February 14th. And in that video, we're gonna talk about picking fabrics. And this is a very basic tutorial. So it will be coming out on Valentine's Day. I'm using this Thimble Blossoms Threadbare pattern. But basically, I talk about color placement and how I pick the colors. And I started with something very simple rather than something like socialites. And if you look, these are all green. I kind of put them by color. And in that video, I talk about how I pick what I pick. I show you what I don't pick. And I started with something very basic, something with just a white and one color instead of a lot of colors, because that's the easiest way to start is to start with simple. I think I have 20 blocks made now. And so you can see I've got like four green, four pink, four red. I'm trying to have it even, except I don't have very many aquas. Let's see, I only have three yellows. And then, put these over here. My blues, I kind of have light blues 
and aquas, if that makes sense. So I've kind of got a variety of colors. But what I'm doing in my book is um, keeping track of the number of colors I have because, let's see, number nine. So I have, I'm keeping track of how many blue, pink, green, red, aqua, yellow. I need to make 64 blocks. I think I've made 20. Um, I have a note, I'm just doing squares with one color and white. I haven't picked my binding or backing, but this is how we're gonna start color theory. And this is just something very beginner because if I'm gonna teach color theory, we've gotta start somewhere easy. And if you're doing something scrappy for the first time, picking something that doesn't have a lot of colors in it will help you. And this one's gonna finish 76 by 76. This one right here, I used, uh, what's that called, Be Beyond Bella. Beyond Bella Color 200. And then this is a Blossom uh, Collection in Gray by Riley Blake. So, but I kind of had them by color. I am pressing open, but that video is pretty fun. It just, I'm gonna show you the ones I use, the ones I don't. And then this one, I'm just gonna finish whenever I have um, 64 blocks. So I've got about a third of it done. Will I be participating in the Moda Quilt Along Glimmer and Glean? I'm not, but we do have the pattern online. It came in, it came in I think Tuesday before Monday or Tuesday before it started freezing. Um, but I'm not sewing that one. Could you show the designer's block in black and white so we can see how designer uses darks and lights? Um, I don't have a designer using black and white right now. When I press to the front side, you don't have trouble with the seams twisting. Because mm -mm, I press it flat first. Is FQS doing a finishing kit for the Prairie Seed Flower Bed Runner? I don't think so. Kimberly, do you ever work with batiks? And if so, if not, why? I don't work with batiks. I think they're ugly and I don't like the way they feel. Now, that's probably not what I should have said, but that's the truth. I just don't like them. I They have a lot of purples, a lot of greens, a lot of colors I don't like. I like very soft colors. Now, we have had some soft batiks, but I just, I just, I have made one quilt with them. When will the layout for the mix size come out? It's gonna come out towards the end, I believe. Okay, so those are all the questions on socialites. What we're gonna do is take like a little two minute break and come back and I'm gonna show you a ton of stuff I've been working on. It's gonna be so fun. So please uh, stay tuned.
We have a ton of stuff. I'm going to try to go slow, but um, we have a ton of things that we're working on, and it's been the first time in the year that I can kind of talk through things. So I'm going to go slow and kind of give you tips and just talk about kind of the different things I'm working on. Um, and I'm going to answer questions before I get into that because a lot of questions came in. I want to give a big thank you to Parker Bug for the super chat. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, and then Bex in Texas said, uh, she said, if using cutting boards, use new ones, any odors or oils will transfer. Oh, so I think people were talking about using their cutting mat, like their cutting wood cutting board for a clapper. I would say if you want to do that, start with a new one. I wouldn't use an old one because she's right. The oils will transfer. And she also said she doesn't like batik. So sorry. I mean, if you guys ask me a question, I'm going to tell you the truth. So Sorry. How many? Okay, so if you're going to make the mixed quilt, you need eight blocks of each size. Katie says she received her pre order of sun wash jelly rolls. When will yardage be available? It'll probably be a week or two. Now, I'm going to just kind of say all this so I don't have to say it at the end. Okay, Texas was iced in. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, nothing was moving. Moda and I, Moda and Fat Quarter Shop were closed. Moda's opening today. So they're going to be a week behind. So whatever, they're going to be way behind, just like we are filling orders. Um, obviously, we're going to try to work a lot of overtime on the weekend, try to catch up. Um, so I can't say now when we'll be caught up, but obviously when, in Texas, there are no plows or whatever to clean the roads. There's none of that. So like when it freezes, you're stuck. So, and even when my one of my kids is here because their school's closed today. So, um, because the electricity was out. So, um, yeah. When do you sew when no one wants quilts anymore? Oh, I don't even hardly give my quilts away. Um, you know, sometimes you could just sew blocks and just not sew them into a quilt if you want to. Um, Tina says, when will the January sew sampler box have a finishing kit? It's already online. The finishing kit should be online. Don't ever be sorry for the truth. Oh, I know I just feel bad when I say negative things. I don't like to be negative. I like to buy white and black cotton fabric by the bolt. What is the best to buy? Okay, so if you're looking for a, like a less expensive route and you want a solid, I would go with a Moda Bella Solid, a Robert Kaufman Kona, or a Riley Blake Confetti Cottons. Those are the three most popular solids. 
If you want like a white on white, I would just get one from your favorite designer. So Lori has some, Camille has some, Fig Tree even. Um, she's gonna have a group coming out with some solid, some solids and lots, of, not solids, but her eyelet print. So I would kind of go from that. Now before you buy a full bolt, I would kind of try it out just to make sure you like the texture. So a Bella or a Kona is probably gonna shred more than something from a collection. Patty says she's been working on her quarter inch. Lori guides, uh, Lori Holt seam guide really helps. I also got a foot that has one side so I can see my material when it goes over the feed dog. Plus I put the quarter inch tape down, yes. What quilts are behind me? So this one right here is a Simply Delightful Jolly Bar pattern, I think. And then this one is our uh, Bountiful Charity Quilt. Thank you to Linnea Reese for the super chat. We appreciate that so much. Diane Rose said, Tula Pink once said she liked two layers of batting. Do you ever do that? I've never tried it. Um, I am gonna be making, I'm gonna be taking the brick house quilt in the big size. So now we're gonna have three brick houses. We're gonna have the regular brick house, bitty brick house, and big brick house. I'm gonna make one of those into a bed quilt. I might try that. I noticed glimmer and gleam pattern on the what's new pattern. Are you going to have a bundle of fabric? I love it so much. No, that bundle, that uses a ton of yardage and it uses a lot of skews that are out of stock. So um, I would kind of just, yeah, I don't have a bundle for that. Okay, 46% of you are making the nine inch blocks, 42% six inch and three, 11% making the three inch. Oh my gosh, that's funny. That's not what I would have thought. I've been wondering if my son's building blocks will work in place of clappers. I haven't searched them out to try. I mean, you could try it. What type of fabric do I recommend for not fraying? So all fabric is going to fray somewhat. I would say if you want it to not fray, the more you starch, the less fraying you're gonna get. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right in and talk about a sew along that we'll be starting soon. It is called the Triangles on a Roll Quilt Along. Now this is your tease because this does not start until March. We're in, Feb we're in January now. The reason I'm showing you this is I have some tips to show you before I move on so that you can save that idea for when you get to your blocks. So um, we're gonna release the fabric requirements March 16th. But just because you're watching, if you wanna know, you need a fat quarter bundle. I'm using the fruit cocktail collection. You need five and two thirds yards of background. And that worked for me using, that will work either with the fabric or you'll see I cut some things length of fabric, so that works either way. Seven eighths yard binding, four and three quarter yards backing, and it finishes at 74 inches square. Now this will not be online until March 16th. So if you need it, you'll have to come back to this video to find it. What we're gonna do is release the fabric requirements March 16th, then the full pattern is going to release March 30th. So what I'm gonna show you is kind of what I'm doing. So you can get the triangles on a roll set and that includes three different rolls. It has the two inch, the three inch, and the four inch. If Those are the only sizes you need. So if you have two, three, and four at home, you don't need to buy the set, but that's what the set includes. And I'm using the Fruit Cocktail Fat Quarter Bundle. And this is, uh, you can pre-order this now. It will be coming soon. Now, what I did to pick my background What I do when I pick a background is I just kind of take a couple colors and just look, what is it going, I don't like that print. What is it going, what is it going to look like? So this is the background that it has like brown, it's, it's a eyelet, it's got like brown eyelet. So I could use that. This is too busy, too busy. And then this has blue. Now when I look at this, and I step, if you step far away, this one to me looks better. So that's how I pick my background, by just laying out my fabrics. 
I do try to use a background from the collection if there is one that I like. If there's not, obviously I will change it. So that's how I picked my background. And let's see, that is not in stock yet, but it's 2045741. Um, and I'll show you my binding in a second. So just to kind of show you my tip on this, when this pattern comes out, download the pattern. And this sew along is in celebration of Worldwide Quilting Day, and um, it's a completely free pattern. Everything is free. The only thing you have to provide is fabric and obviously the triangle paper, because we did write this for triangle paper. We did not write this without triangle paper. Of course, you could figure it out if you wanted to. So, um, uh, we're going to show you some colorways. So fruit cocktail, this is the one I will be making. So this is the exact color I'm using. This is Be Vintage by Lori Holt. It will be in stock right before the collection starts and that's a really good option. Simply Delightful by Sherry and Chelsea. Now this isn't in stock yet, but should, all of these are not in stock yet, but they should be in stock before this starts. And then the next one is state stateside. So we'll kind of go through them again, just real quick, but just to give you a look, this is what, you know, just think about what fabric you want to use. So I'll be using that first one. And this is going to go from March to May, but I'm going to show you a tip. When that full pattern comes out on March 30th, do all of your triangle paper at one time. So this is week one, and I just used Alpha Bitties and Wonder Clips to clip my other fabrics. So I did all of this in one day. So these are all, so there's a lot the first one, and I have them in order. So this is board one. Board two, same thing. All my triangle paper at once. I did cut my inner sections that go here and here, length of fabric, and you have enough background to do that, and I just label everything. Board three, this is like the next week of it. So I have everything, this, this will just save you time. I mean, this took me maybe three hours to cut and stitch all this. Then I ran out of design boards, and we got design, this is like week four. And I'm going to show you one of these I got too close to the edge. This is how you make a quilt fast. This is how I get so much stuff done is I do everything all at once. And now I did go through two bobbins doing this, which kind of frustrated me. I think I'm getting close. Let me see if I can find the one that I got. I think this is the one I got too close to the edge. Yeah, right here. So this is my tip for you. Now the reason I'm showing you this is I'm taking this home this weekend and I'm gonna cut around all these. I'm gonna cut it out, put it on a board and my kids are gonna pull all the paper off. And whoever does it gets 10 bucks. So uh, whoever volunteers first is the person who gets the money and it saves me about 30 minutes. But I wanna show you, so that is week, whatever, six or five. The, on this week, I got too close to the edge right here. I barely, can you see it? I barely like it's clipped a tiny bit. So I went ahead since I got too close to the edge. See how I'm a little off? To me that matters. That's how I get things so precise. So I went ahead and cut around the edge and put a little pin and that's gonna tell me, hey, when you get to that week. So just so you guys know what I'm doing, I'm taking all these boards, I did since we're releasing the pattern all at once, I did all of my paper once. I'm going to cut it all down, pull the paper, iron all of it at once. And then this is my binding. This is my outer borders. Now, what I did when I downloaded this, I downloaded the full pattern. I read through the full pattern. And anything that needed to be length of fabric or width of fabric, sewed together, I cut length of fabric and I cut that first. And then my binding, 
my binding, um, I need to cut down. I didn't do that. And I don't have my backing yet. I have to wait till the fabric comes in. I don't even know. Let's see. I picked 20463-14, and I'll buy that when it comes in stock. So this is Triangles on a Roll Quilt Along. Of course, doesn't start until March. The designer for Stateside is Sweetwater. Fruit cocktail, all of the ones we showed you should be in stock before it starts because it doesn't start until the end. And I use 100% cotton aurifil in my bobbins. I don't use polyester. And um, now I'm going to move on to Barn Star Sampler. And I literally just take this to and from work just like this. I mean, super easy. Okay, so we're going to talk about Barn Star Sampler. Okay, so this is the one. Martingale is um, no longer printing books, so if you need the book, you can get the book at Shelly Cavana's website. Um, she will not allow us to sell the PDF, but she is reprinting the book, so when it's reprinted, I will have paper copies. So I'm going to talk about this sew along and how we're doing it at Fat Quarter Shop and how Pat Sloan is doing it. Now, just so you know, she's also hosting a sew along and she's doing it faster than us. We're going slower and that's okay. You can follow her, you can follow me, whoever you wanna follow. So on this, we put together a Barn Star Sampler foundation paper set and this is going to have all the paper you need and it's a ton to get things accurate. So y'all ask, how do I get things accurate? I use this paper. Okay, so this is the designer, Shelly Kavana. I'm gonna talk through what I did. And now the way I colored this quilt is I cheated. And Sarah Price, who works for us, always colors my quilt because she's awesome and she can do it better than me and faster. So, um, that's how I colored it. Now, each month, I'm going to show you my blocks, and if you want to, you can follow along with us. Now, the Fat Quarter Bundle of Sun Washed is in stock, and I'm using a combination of Sun Washed and what's the other collection I'm using? Let me see. Simply Delightful. So, Simply Delight, or Delight, yeah, Simply Delightful is not in stock yet, but should be in stock soon. So, let's talk about the tips that I have for this one. Now this quilt's gonna be pretty big at 80 by 100. We have a blog post um, on how we're doing it and I'm sewing each in the book. There are different sections for, let me show you, like block sections. So I'm doing one block section each, each uh, month to start and then I combine later. Okay. So on this one, this took me eight hours to make both blocks. That is a ton of time. What I did, which I wouldn't do again, is I cut and made one block to make sure it was right. And then I had to cut the second block. Now that was probably a bad idea because if I would have cut them all at one time, it probably wouldn't have taken me eight hours. Okay, so to get this exact, these I use triangle paper H200 for all of these. And when I pieced everything, I did units one at a time. I didn't try to combine like I do with socialites where I combine a bunch of steps. I didn't do that because I was too scared. Now this one, what I did is I cut the white fabric a quarter inch bigger, trimmed down. I cut this fabric half inch bigger and I used an eight and a half inch square ruler to trim down. So that's cutting these bigger was my tip. Using triangle paper is my tip here. Now this, these are rectangles, rectangles, and rectangles. So you have to imagine that before you put this on. So what I did is on all of these squares or rectangles, I cut them half inch longer. Then I trimmed down. That took a lot of time. And then um, I trimmed everything down before I added my corner squares. I pressed everything open 
just because, oh, that's gonna bug me. I have to fix this. I have to make this flat. Um, I pressed everything open because I just thought there was just too many seams. So this is my first block. And again, I'm combining Sherry and Chelsea fabric with Coriotor. So this is the first one. And then this is my second one. Now, one of these, if you look at the color placement that Sarah did for me, I accidentally did the wrong color here. So it might look a slightly bit different than what you see on the blog, and that's okay. I'll just switch out fabric in another block. Um, but give, um, having Sarah color it for me really helps. But the reason I combined the designers is I wanted something, I love this quilt. I think what Shelly did is beautiful. Um, kind of disappointed that Martingale's going out of business because I was hoping she would have another book because um, I just love it. And so I'm glad that we're still able to do the sew along. And if you want to sew along with her, um, she has a Facebook group. I can't think of the name of it right now. And she's sewing a little bit faster. So you can get in that group. You can look at our colorways, her colorways, Pat Sloan's colorway. And that will really help you um, pick color if you're struggling with that. So that's Barn Star Sampler. And so my tip would be triangle paper. Hopefully there's no mistakes. Cutting bigger, trimming down. And it's so much easier when I started working on month two, month three, just cut it all at one time. And if you make a mistake, you just have to recut, but it just took too long to cut twice. So that's my tip of that. So that is Barn Star Sampler. That's the second thing I'm working on. The next thing I'm working on is Star Streams. Now every year, we at Fat Quarter Shop design something really cool for you and give it to you completely free and this one is this year's and Jocelyn designs it every year and this is a scrap quilt so what we're trying to do is get you to use your leftover scraps so I'm going to kind of show you you download this free only at Pat Quarter Shop and this quilt finishes at 56 by 64 and there are different blocks so and they're all very easy blocks. So there's seven blocks. And then this. So I'm gonna show you what I've done so far. So it's only January and I have about 25% done because I've made 16 blocks and I think you need 64. Oh, here's my blocks, sorry. So here's some of my blocks and I'll just show them to you. So I've got some Minnick and Simpson fabric, fig tree fabric, Layla Boutique fabric, and Sutton Bunny Hill design fabric. This is April Rosenthal, the designer of today's socialite block. This is Camille fabric. So that's, let's see, and you need more of these. So I need 28, so I've got six. This next one is called Fair and Square, and I made, um, let's see, Fig Tree, Berry Basket, Camille. So I'm making at least one from of this, because I need more of this from each collection, and as many of these as I can without repeating fabric. So when you look here, this is the same collection. I'm trying not to repeat any fabrics. This one is the Pinwheel Star. This one is the Cross Star. And with these, I am keeping fabrics in the center duplicating, but not on the outside. This one is fair and square, fancy star, four patch. So there's my progress on that. So this is all leftover fabrics. I am using one consistent background. What number is this in my book? Number five, okay. Now, I will tell you on this one the other day, I made it with the wrong background because I wasn't thinking. But the background I'm using is 291311. I think that's from A Beautiful Day. And the binding I is 55232-18. It's probably a stripe or something. I don't remember what it is. And then I'm just keeping track of what I've done and just keeping them kind of in order. 
and I don't know, I probably finish this by May or June and we'll just see. So this one's been fun. And you know, in the past we've done simple ones. This one's a little bit more complicated, but we want to change it up every year so that you keep sewing with us and you don't get bored. So that's how far I am with this one. And, you know, in a month or two, I'll show you more. So now we're going to move to the Riley Blake block challenge. This one is also free. So this is a completely free pattern from Riley Blake Designs. And so you would go to the Riley Blake Designs website, and that's where you download it. This one is designed by Christopher Thompson, and this is last week's block. So... I'm sewing this one in the Calico collection. I'm using 12 857 T rows as my background. Lori colored this for me, and Lori Holt is also sewing this, and you can see this on her blog, social media, video. Um, and with this, um, we're gonna turn it into a table runner, and Lori is going to uh, give that pattern at the end. So on here, Let's see, what did I do this one? Okay, so let's see. I used H150 for all of these half square triangles. And what I did here is I took the green fabrics, I cut them half inch bigger, and then trimmed it down by putting this on top and trimmed it down. And then the rest I just did like normal and let's see. Okay, so I did some of it pressed open, some of it pressed to one side. I kind of just do whatever I feel like that day. And I am doing something similar to last year's Brick House. We're going to show it in a different week, but I do have some Brick House stuff planned. So that was last week's block. This week's block is by Jennifer Long and this one was more difficult. So this one, my biggest tip was, okay, that is a half square triangle with a corner square on top. So what I did with those is I just made them bigger, a little bit bigger, and then when I trimmed down, you have to just put your ruler right on the corner and make sure it hits all four points before you trim down. So this one was pretty, I don't wanna say advanced, but pretty advanced, but it's really pretty in the end. And um, I've seen some really beautiful blocks. Now you'll wanna follow the Riley Blake uh, Facebook group and um, they show beautiful blocks. All their designers are sewing along and it's really fun. And this one's really, um, great because it's free. So that, I've been working on that. And I've been working on the temperature quilt. So, holy moly, is all I gotta say. I don't know what I was thinking when I designed this, or Jocelyn designed it, but holy moly, it's a lot of work. It's gonna be so pretty when it's done, and I think I'm gonna give it to my sister-in-law because I think she'll like it because it's pretty modern. So if you want to do the temperature quilt, it's a free pattern. Yeah, it's a free pattern, but to do the temperature, you download the quilt planner from Moda Fabrics website, because they had that. Now, most people do a temperature chart in solids. I don't like working with just solids. To me, it's kind of like batiks. It's boring, it's modern, it doesn't fit my house. I would never use it. So I love Camille fabric. So I just took a one fine day, which is one of her fat quarter bundles, picked and choose what I wanted. She had oranges in that collection. I just took that out because I didn't like it. So I just kind of went from hot to cold. So my tips are download the free pattern first. And so the free pattern comes from fat quarter shop. The free planner comes from Moda Fabrics. So what I've done, now I got really cold here this week and I left this at home. So this is row one. 
And we made this really easy for you by putting the days on each row. So this is January 1st through the 20th is this row. And I labeled it A because I'm going to add as I go. So I'm gonna just do the row and basically it's the high and low temperature of the day. And all the information is in the pattern. So this is row one. This is row two, so this starts like January 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, and then I'm gonna go home this weekend and just keep adding. Now, some of the things that have helped me with this is, I, every time I work on it, I just keep making more. So when I go to sew, I will use up some of these. I have all, not all, but some of the um, sashing done. This is for the bottom. I'm kind of just cutting as I go. And as I deplete one color, I make more. So just, just I'm not going to just make a ton, a ton, a ton, because I don't want to like do overdo it, I guess. So my tip is just as you run out of a color, make four more. And you can, um, you can either use the triangle paper that's listed in the pattern, you can do it the traditional way, or you can use the Eleanor Burns method for flying geese. And then B is row two. Now, soon, once I have row two done, I will, I'm cutting all of these strips length of fabric, and I will sew row one to background, to row two to a background, and I'm just gonna build it as the year goes. And since it's been really cold here, I'm going to have a lot of blue. So that is temperature chart. And y'all just keep throwing your questions in. I'm going to answer them at the end just so I don't um, get too distracted. So this is the Scrapping Assist Happiness Quilt Along, celebrating Lori Holt's newest book. And these are the most recent blocks. So I did some different things on this one than normal. So on this block, I really wanted to show a lot of color. So in the book, you can do one and a half, two and a half, or three and a half inch strips. And I just decided this quilt is so pretty and the fabrics are so pretty, I only used one and a half inch strips. I sewed that on her, um, what's this called? Interfacing, and trimmed it down. So that was my first one, super easy. The second one, so that's Scrappy Strings Block, and there is a video on Lori's channel called Sew Your Stash Series Number Three, and that shows you her tutorial on making this block. She released it two years ago. This was last week's block, which is Shortcut Star. I used triangle paper here, flying geese paper here, and then here, I cut these bigger and trimmed down, and I have a pop-up to show you on this one. So this one, if you really want to be accurate, you can always cut those outside strips bigger and trim down with a square ruler, which is exactly what I did here. And you'll see some friction lines on there. Before I cut, I kind of check. You don't have to do that. You know, obviously a lot of people say if you piece precisely, you don't need to do that. And that's absolutely correct. If I'm having an off day and I'm not sewing that accurate, I'm gonna do that so it comes out accurate. And then um, this is the spare square block. And these are one and a half inch squares. And I pressed open just because those are so small. So we are about halfway done with uh, this one. Maybe not halfway, I think it goes to December, but it's a lot of blocks. But um, I sewed all of mine already. I sewed everything already. And it's gonna finish at 74 by, oh, 83 by 83. And this is also the Calico collection. So I've been working on that. Then I have been working on the Jolly Bar Sew Along, and I sewed all of this last year, so it's hard for me to remember what I did. So this is Jolly Bar 4 Sew Along. You need the uh, Jolly Bar 4 book, and I'm going to show you my blocks. And I don't really, I guess I don't really have that many tips, except to say 
that, um, well first, I'm sewing mine with the Simply Delightful collection by Sherry and Chelsea. Now, if you're using a Jolly Bar, you need the full Jolly Bar, so you cannot starch. I cannot not starch, so I wasted money and bought two layer cakes instead. Then I starched, and I have a ton left over, and all of those are gonna be shown in the other quilts you saw, like the spare square block, the um, brick house, tons of different blocks that I'm doing that are scrappy. Let's see, what did I show that was scrappy? Star Streams, that's the name of it. So that's how I justified buying it extra. So I did have to, I made some cutting errors when I did this. So you're not gonna be, if you wanna make this exactly like me, I had to end up using scraps from uh, my Moda cap sets because I made some cutting errors. So um, I did, when I got this, I cut every block all at once, stacked design boards like you saw in that triangles on a roll, assembled it all at one time. It took me like two or three days. Um, on this, I used my favorite white on white dot. Um, I'm having that reprinted, so it'll be in stock in May. And uh, on this first block, you can use triangle paper for here if you want. And just super simple. And you can see I did not press open on this one. So I guess that day I didn't feel like it. So that was week one. So you get the book and then you download this each of the weeks. And it started in January. It ends in March. So stained glass, you're going to make two. And I am going to show you some blocks in different collections so you can see that. And then this is the herb garden. So that was week two. Week three was this week. And so we've got the Galloway block, which I used half square triangle paper. And then the Curio block. And so you can see some blocks I pressed open, some I didn't. I kind of just go with what, um, can I see the setting? The setting has, if you look at the setting, there are sashing between all of the blocks. So because of that, I didn't have to worry if I pressed open or didn't press open. If you look at the Barn Star Sampler, there is no sashing in between, so you kind of have to press open. So this is Jolly Bar 4 Quilt Along. Now my quilt is made in Sherry and Chelsea fabric, Simply Delightful. I'm going to show you four other options from different people who work here, and that way if you're sewing along, you can um, look at other color options. This first one is the Blue de France collection by French General, and Crystal made these. And I'm going in the same order as what I showed. And then the only difference is on this one, she decided to not add corner squares to these two corners. And that is great. Anytime you wanna change a block, change it. Don't feel compelled to sew it exactly as shown. And I'm not sure, I think this is a French General, uh, her French General solids that she has. So if you wanted to do blue and white, that again is blue to France. The next one is Sun Wash by Corey Yoder. So this one, you um, the fabric is in stock, so you can definitely do this one. Um, Nova made these blocks. This is so cute, y'all. Look at this. That is cute. I love that. And this is the background from the collection. And Nova made these. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, one more. So this is a great way to see fabrics, so you can see kind of what they look like. We try to show you different color options. 
This is the filigree collection by Zen Chic, and Riley made these. So I think it's fun just to see what other people make. This is the spotted collection right here from a uh, Zen Chic. Um, it's a basic. It's a little bit more modern, a little bit more modern than grunge. But if you like grunge as a background, you'll probably like Spotted. So I'm so excited that everyone sewed, um, so we can show different collections. And then next week I'll show you next week's block. Now, since it's February, we are in Black History Month, and we celebrate that with our Stronger Together. And I'm going to show you my blogs and give you some tips. And thank you to everyone who has donated. We have raised our $7,000. And Kevin and I will be mailing our check for, for um, I think, $10,000. And that goes to UNCF. This year... Our quilt was designed by Michelle Ramsey, and she was on our live stream on January 20th, and she talked a lot about her inspiration for this quilt. So in part one, what you're going to be making is, they're called star blocks. I needed to see what they were called. And this is a pretty easy quilt. I'm going to give you some tips, though. I'm going to just show one block and give you some tips. And this is a completely free pattern. We just asked for you to donate to the United Negro College Fund, UNCF. We encourage you to donate $15, even though we have mat we have raised our donations, um, we would still like to raise more. Okay, so my tip for you when you're making this is I would use triangle paper for this. That's just me, you don't have to. You would use H150. Now, if you want this to come out exactly, exactly right, you can cut this and this the same size. You can cut this wider and this taller and trim down. Now, on this, press to one side. Now, I wanna show you, I use color 2000 here. The reason I did that is I did not want navy thread to show through on this seam right here. So anytime you have a white seam, you do not want to use navy thread. So I'm going to show you on the front how it doesn't show through. These are tiny stitches. They're like a 1.3, 1.5 stitch. You cannot see those stitches even when you pull. So if you're going to use a light thread, Make sure you use a light, a light, a shorter stitch length. Now here, I can use a longer stitch length and use a navy thread because I don't have to worry about the navy thread poking through to the white. So that's my tip. Now you don't have to be as fussy as me. You can just use white thread. You can do whatever you want. That's just what what um, you know what I chose to do because I don't want the thread to throw to come to the top. So you can use a longer stitch length with your blue thread. But if you've got white on blue or blue on white, you want to use a smaller stitch length. So that is Stronger Together. And I will show you week two next week. And then I was going to talk about uh, the Sew Sampler Club. So on this, if you're curious and have ever wanted to join the Sew Sampler uh, subscription box, we now have an a la carte box. You can try it out. It costs more per box, but it's just, you wanna just try it out one time. We're gonna offer this a few times and see how it goes. It probably will not be something we do forever. Um, we had requests for it, so we decided to offer that. So we're not gonna spoil the surprise for you, but that is now available. It's called a la carte. But I did wanna show you the quilt. So we always have a quilt pattern in there that you can sew along with us. This is block 10, designed by Joanna Figueroa. And um, that's the block you can look forward to. And we do have quilt kits left of this. And at the end, I'll show you the whole quilt uh, 
opened and everything. It's just kind of a mystery, but we partnered with Joanna of Fig Tree Quilts to design this for So Sampler members. Now the Cupid box, oh my gosh. Okay, I love this box. So it's sold out, so you cannot get it. The only way you can get this is at the end, we're gonna have a giveaway. And um, it's gonna be an exciting giveaway because Christopher's going to ask a question. Um, we're gonna have to feed him a question to ask. Um, so uh, this is the Cupid box, I'm gonna reveal it. It is sold out. And um, so we always have a little, oh, there's a coupon, I can't show you the coupon. And then um, we have a Quilt As You Go strip mug mats. Now these sold out really fast, so you guys loved them. So I have restocked them. Uh, I didn't realize they were gonna sell out so fast. Um, this is a really cute uh, slap band. I'm gonna show you how you use it. So you could put this on your sewing machine and just let it sit, or you can do this. And then what you can do is pins. Sorry, I've moved the pins. And then we have a cloth works. We've never featured cloth works in a box and you guys love the fabric. So with the pins, that's what you do. And then you just pull from your, you don't want to get too, too many on there, but that's what it's used for. And, or you could just go to uh, one of your kids' basketball games and be trendy. People would be like, where did you get that? Uh, we have a letter opener, and you can use that to actually open the boxes if you want. And thread, you get an R fill. There was three different uh, colors we offered that were different versions of pink, so you got one of those. And then this lovely pattern that I'm about to show you. And of course, our wonderful information you definitely want to keep this because there might be stuff in here that you didn't know um sometimes there's stuff about the notions that uh that you might not know and there's always a coupon so uh sometimes we sell out of these sometimes we don't but thank you this time we did sell out our next box is going to be liberty and here is the quilt thank you so much to carol for the super chat so very uh, fun, basic beginner, but really cute how you can do horizontal or vertical hearts and just really, really cute. So that's something new. Oh, it's so cute. And then this is the backing we used. And we do have finishing kits for this available. Now I wanted to show you every year on our solid club, we, uh, we do something different. So this year we're featuring the Sandpiper pattern. It is a paper or a PDF pattern, and I'm showing you Jan I'm showing you this February block because I've already shown you January. Now, if you join now, we've already sold out of the we've already shipped the February block. So if you sign up today, you would get March. The only reason we're showing you a week late is I didn't do a live last week, so that's why you would miss that. Now, of course, you could email us and ask if we have any left over. So she is basing her, so Carrie picked all the colors and she's basing this on different birds. And so January was the blue jay, February is hummingbird, hummingbird. The quilt, if you're gonna sew along with us, is 53 by 68. And what she's doing is each month she's making one block from what she gets. And this background is the Essex yarn dyed flax. E0641143, and then she'll have a lot left over, and you'd probably have enough left over to do a fun backing if you wanted to. And then there's this free, so the pattern is a paid pattern, but this is a free cutting guide that's gonna kinda give you tips and show you the layout of um, the different months. So it's not in order because we wanted the color placement to look good. So it's like January, February, April, March. So it gives you a tip on that. So that's fun. The next thing I wanted to show you was we have this free fun quilt as you go table runner tutorial on our blog. Our blog is the Jolly Jabber. 
our full supply list list on our blog that we use the junior jelly roll from flower pot one pack of our happy cloud table runner batting and the blog has step-by-step -step instructions and photos on how to make it and this is quilted on a home machine and machine bound so if you want to make this it's completely free pattern on our blog YouTube. Oh, this is YouTube. Sorry. That one was our blog. This one is YouTube. So this on last week, we released a video called this quilt did not go as planned because it didn't. I made a mistake and you're going to see how I worked through it and how if you make a mistake, you don't have to throw away your stuff. You can just use it. Now I want to show you some tips. This one is, I'm going to show you some binding tips that I've never shown before. And this is a way to cheat. Okay, so this one, Teresa did the binding by hand. She sewed it by machine and then by hand. Let me show you the back. This was my leftover squares. Okay, so this, I'm gonna leave this one on the left. This is regular binding. And the reason I did regular binding is I'm gonna actually use this at home. Now these two, I'm probably not going to use so I was like, you know what, why? I'm probably gonna use them like at work, but not at home. So we don't have a lot of time here. And when you need to, when you don't have a lot of time, you can glue your binding down. So this one, all three of these that I'm gonna show you, machine bound on the front. Okay, on the back. This is Fabric Fuse. I'm trying to see what company it is. Thermoweb. So this is Thermoweb. Okay, so I'm going to read you all of the notes. This is Fabric Fuse, permanent glue, washable, quick dry, easy to apply, but can be messy. So this is all glued down. Teresa did not hand quilt it, but it's glued down. It's not coming up. It's permanent. It's just a little messy, she said. So this one was a little bit messier. So those are, um, so the pros are it's permanent, washable, quick, dry, easy to apply. Cons are it can be messy. On the front, obviously you see no difference. So that's one tip. The next one, she used Fabric Fusion by Aileen's. And um, this is also permanent, washable, quick dry, easy to apply. The cons on this is it's clear glue instead of white. So it's very hard to see. And so you might, we might, we have some glue that like is on the outside because it's harder to see. So um, that is just, if you ever are in a bind and you don't want to hand bind it down, you can use this. Now, I have never washed, uh, we've never like actually washed a quilt to see if it works. So I cannot speak for that, but I can speak for if you need to save time, use some glue. So again, hand bound fabric fuse and fabric fusion. This is Aileen's and this is Thermoweb. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna show you some things that are new at Fat Quarter Shop. These are uh, new quilt kits that Moda let us borrow, all four of these. This first one is called Country Home. It features the Emma collection. Now I wanna show you some things. This is a panel. This is a panel. This is a panel. This is a panel. These are pieced. So this is a quilt that is a combination of piecing houses and then cheater. And this quilting is amazing because she's stitched right in the, in the ditch, even though there's not a ditch because it's a panel. So panel, 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 panel. I'm going to show you the back. So pretty. So this is a way, this quilt is beautiful and this is a panel. So it's a way to get I mean, I love this quilt. It's a way to cheat. Sometimes you just need to cheat. I mean, that's so cute. So again, Country Home Quilt Kit featuring Emma by Sherry and Chelsea. 
That one was 57 by 67. This one is called Clover Blossom Farm, designed by Kansas Trebles Quilts. It's 78 by 78 and um, really pretty. And this has beautiful quilting. If you can see the custom quilting in here, it's really pretty. Now, I would say this one would be difficulty level hard. It's got a lot of pieces. It's a lot of intricate intricacy. If I was doing something like this, I would do like so many blocks a week, maybe space it out. And then I'll show you the back in a second. So that is the backing that Moda used on theirs. This is called Board Games Quilt Kit. It's featuring the Date Night Collection by Basic Gray. It's 58 by 73. And uh, this has a pantograph quilting. And this block is basically rectangles with half square triangles and a square. It is on point. The blocks are easy. My tips would be on point. That's gonna be your hardest part. And this right here is not grunge. This is grunge, but this is actually from the collection. So I would say the blocks are very doable. It's the on point that'll get you. And Maggie Honeyman quilted it. Sarah Hushman pieced it. That's a really cool label. And that's the backing they used. Okay. This next quilt is called Stars and Stripe Quilt Kit. This is the stateside collection we showed earlier by Sweetwater. Now this one is pieced and these are appliqued. And what, what they did here, go over there, Christopher, he's trying to stand in here. These, this is actually um, raw edge. So it's cut, they put fusible down, put it down and then did a raw edge stitch around it. So it's applique, but it's not needle turn. Very uh, basic beginner quilt, really cute. And love the quilting on it. The quilting is by Maggie Honeyman and Allison Dale piece this one. Okay. So now I'm going to, uh, we're gonna do a giveaway in a second. My son's gonna ask you a question, but I'm gonna answer all the questions. Okay, so on the Barn Star Sampler, we are selling a half yard bundle. I don't think a fat quarter bundle is enough, but what I did, if you wanna use a fat quarter bundle, you would just have to use more of the fabrics. Thank you to Pamela Emery for the super chat. To throw says, are you going to end up making the red stash and stow square organizer that was in the Christmas box? No, that was a one time we did that exclusively for the Jolly Box. Uh, lifting and stitching. Oh, he must, heavyweight. It's easier to mix pressing open and to one side for the Galway block. Yes, agree. Marsha Baker do you think I can use a fat quarter bundle of little snippets would work for the temperature quilt? Yes, I definitely do. I think you could pull anything from your stash. Pamela Emery says, on the large barn star sampler block, does Kimberly have tips on squaring up a larger block like this? Okay, can I see the block? Sorry, it's gonna be in the stack of things. Sorry, we just have to grab it. Do you know what you're gonna ask? Okay, y'all two have to go outside and figure it out. What you're gonna ask so you don't ask something silly. So Pamela, on this, what I did is I just, honestly, I just tried to piece as accurately as I could and just trimmed. But my tip is really just try to be as accurate as possible. Now, since I made these bigger over here, you could either trim that before you put it in the block or after you put it in the block. It kind of depends on your comfort level. I trimmed it before and it still came out a quarter inch away. 
Okay, Sharon Hutchison, in your opinion, would it look good to mix and match Lori's fabric collection? Or is there a Lori collection that should stand alone? Yeah, I think you can mix and match them. Sometimes she'll have bright, sometimes she'll have primitive, but they all really mix and match well. Obviously, all her farm girl collections mix well with everything. Let's see, Mrs. Hook says, a friend of mine from Australia told me her cheat on coloring her blocks. She goes to Pinterest and picks a set of colors she loves and uses them to pick her colors. That's a great tip. And you could also use that with thread, anything like that. What quilt along is using the triangle paper on a roll? That is the triangles on a roll. Quilt along, it starts in March. I just kind of wanted to tease it today to give you my tips because obviously I have to eventually sew that into a quilt and I can't save that for months and months. Um, are you gonna make a 60 degree triangle paper? No, but that's a good idea. I don't know, we'd have to, I'd have to like really think that out. Great idea to use the kids. My son is doing his home economics on sewing. He made sacks to hold his skater wax so it wouldn't rub on all his stuff. Awesome. Lifting and stitching, thank you so much for the super chat. He says thank you for the great tips and tricks. Thank you for watching. And then Donna Martinez also gave us a super chat. Thank you so much. Teresa would like to know what is WOF? Okay, so WOF mean, means with the fabric. LOF, LOF means length of fabric. Tell him to put that off his head first. Um, could you make a smaller quilt with one, one and a half and two? Yeah, you can always, uh, size things down. I would just say, give yourself some time to get experienced. What triangle paper do I use the most? Hands down H200. Like I run out of it once a year. The others, I maybe run out every two years. What is my favorite background color right here? This is 20708-36. It's a random dot that came out years ago. I just keep reprinting it, honestly, selfishly for myself. It's from Stacy Itsu. It's from a farm collection. And then thank you to Alaska Way 907 for the super chat. Okay, so Christopher, do you want to come in here? Don't do that on camera. Okay, so this is my son Christopher. Hello. He say hello. Hi. So um, this is Cupid Box. We're giving away three of them, and he's going to ask a question, and you're going to answer it, and we'll pick a winner. What do you, mean? you have to ask the question. Okay. Do any of your kids help tear the paper from triangles on a roll paper? Awesome. Okay, so I'll see you next week.